Hi, my name is Patrick. I'm the station manager for Simsbury Community Media, and welcome to another SCM training video. In this episode, we're going to go over how to live stream and record a town meeting in the Simsbury Town Hall main meeting room. It's a good idea to arrive at least 15 minutes to a half hour early before the meeting begins. This will leave time to work out any bugs that may occur when setting up. Enter using the door above the police station. If the door is locked, enter the code given to you by SCM staff on the keypad to the left of the door. After you enter the code, hit the star key. If you don't have a code, please contact SEM staff. That's me. When you first arrive, poke your head into the main meeting room to ensure that the microphones are placed in the proper positions. There should be one microphone in front of each board member and one at the podium. If there aren't enough microphones for every board member, then move some of the microphones in between the board member seats. Make sure there's a microphone on the podium in the corner of the room. This is where public audience, presentations, and other public speaking events will happen. Now that the microphones are placed in the proper positions, head upstairs to the Board of Education. To get upstairs, enter your code in the keypad to unlock the door. If you don't have a code, please contact the station manager. That's me. Head to the closet past the Board of Education meeting room. Here you'll find the PC used to operate the robotic cameras in the main meeting room. Under the monitor, there's a pull-out tray that holds a keyboard and mouse. Turn the knob to the left and unlock the tray and pull it out. From here, wiggle the mouse or press any key on the keyboard to wake up the computer. In order to record this meeting, you'll be using a program called vMix. This software allows you to switch between cameras when recording and live streaming events. Once you have access to the desktop, locate the vMix desktop icon. There will be a few of these templates on the desktop, so we want to pick the one labeled MMR, which is located in the middle of the screen. Double click on the icon. This will launch vMix and the companion PTZ camera software. Now that you have vMix open, let's go over the user interface. You might find it a bit intimidating at first, but don't worry. I'm here to help. On the top half of the screen, you'll see the video feeds. The camera feed on the left hand side is the standby feed. This feed previews the selected camera inputs. vMix does not broadcast this. The camera feed on the right hand side of the screen displays what will be broadcast to the audience once we're live streaming. This is a very important distinction to remember. Down below these two screens, you'll see multiple boxes. These boxes are named Titles, Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3, MMR Projector, Credits, and Starting Soon. First, we're going to start by right-clicking on Titles. A gray box will appear. Left-click on the Title Editor option. This will bring up a new window. On the default selected Headline tab, we can change the name of the meeting to accurately reflect what meeting is being broadcast. So if it's a Board of Selectmen meeting, we can change the name to Board of Selectmen. Next, select the Description tab on the left-hand side of the window. Here, we will change the date to the current date. Once you've done this, you can click the red X at the top right of the Title Editor window. The name and date should now be updated. To make the titles appear on the screen, click the small number one located between the preview panel and the broadcast panel. It's located right here. When displaying the projector feed, remember to remove the graphic that says the name of the meeting and the SEM logo. To do this, click on the one button in the middle of the screen to disable it. When you cut back to the main meeting room, make sure to re-enable this graphic by clicking the one button again. Next, you'll be able to see the live camera feeds from Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3, and the projector. If you'd like to switch to any of these feeds, left click on the tile preview. This will make it appear on the preview window on the top left. Next, click on the fade or cut button located in between the two windows. You can do this with any of the feeds. You can also press the numbers one, two, three, or four on the numpad, and these will automatically cut to the corresponding camera when the button is pressed. You're doing great. Give yourself a pat on the back. 
We start our recordings and live streams five minutes before the meeting begins. We air the live stream starting soon graphic during that time. Select the live stream starting soon title and click either fade or cut to push this to the broadcast window. On the very bottom of the vMix window, you'll see the buttons record and stream. When the time comes, all you need to do is left click on the record button and the stream button five minutes before the meeting begins. You'll see these buttons go from a yellow color to a red color. Red means we have an established connection and there are no issues with the live stream. If the stream or record button remains yellow, contact SCM staff. Make sure you have the wide shot. That's the shot with all the board members on the screen and the standby windows so you can switch to it when the meeting starts. A good way to make sure the stream is going out correctly is to monitor the stream on YouTube. Navigate to the Simsbury Community Television YouTube channel on either your smartphone or the computer you're using and click on the live stream. If everything looks and sounds okay, you're good to go. Another thing that's important to remember is when the meeting starts, make sure to turn on the audio. That's located here in the audio mixer panel. If this icon is not green, then it means no audio will be transmitted. You will still be able to hear the audio, but again, the audio will not be transmitted unless this icon in the audio mixer is green. The audio is enabled when you see the audio meter moving up and down between the preview and broadcast window. That's located right here in vMix. The meeting begins when you hear a board member running the meeting say something along the lines of, I call this meeting to order. This is when you want to fade from the stream starting soon graphic to the wide shot of the board members. Remember, if the audio sounds too loud for you, it may just be the computer volume. So don't immediately change the volume in the audio mixer. If the bars look normal height to you and they're all green and not yellow or red, but it's still too loud or quiet, then change the computer volume to your preference. You can do this by going to the audio icon in the bottom right of the Windows mixer tray, right clicking on that and pulling down the audio for vMix and that should make it a little easier for you. Or you can use the remote on the television and just bring the audio down there. But if the audio levels are green in vMix, and they're not yellow and red, that means the audio is good. The meeting is over when it's adjourned or moves into executive session. We do not record or stream executive sessions, so make sure to stop streaming and recording. Also remember to disable the audio. We don't listen to the executive sessions either. You'll see a title with a graphic that says robotic cameras operated by SEM volunteers and staff. After turning off the audio, broadcast this graphic for a few seconds in order to credit yourself. To stop the stream, left click on the stream button on the bottom left hand of vMix. There will be a pop-up confirming that you'd like to end the stream. Click on yes. To stop the recording, left click on the record button again and confirm on the pop-up that you would like to end the recording. The cameras we use to record government meetings are called PTZ robotic cameras. These cameras are hung on the ceiling in the main meeting room. When you open up the vMix desktop shortcut, another program will launch as well. This software is called PTZ Optics. It is the companion software for the PTZ robotic cameras, and it looks like this. This software will allow you to control the cameras remotely. Super cool feature. You'll be able to pan, tilt, zoom in, zoom out, and create presets for camera positions. In order to control a specific camera, select one of the following gray tabs on the top under the select camera portion. They are listed as MMR1, MMR2, and MMR3. On the top of the PTZ optics window, the camera numbers correspond to how they are listed in the vMix software. So MMR1 is Cam1 in the vMix software. Once you've selected the camera you want to control, you can use the arrows located in the middle of the software to pan or tilt. Below the arrows, the magnifying glass plus will allow you to zoom in, and the magnifying glass minus will zoom out. At the bottom of the PTZ optics window, you'll see tiles with images and text over them. 
These are for saved presets for the camera. Each camera will have its own saved presets. A preset saves the pan, tilt, and zoom information on the camera, allowing you to recall the camera's positioning whenever you'd like. Some of these presets may carry over. However, they'll most likely need to be adjusted. People will shuffle around, the chairs won't always be in the same spot. So sometimes it's best just to readjust them. In this portion, we'll go over how to create your own presets. Our recommended preset list is a wide shot of the board members, dedicated podium shot, board chair close-up, and an audience wide shot. We recommend making a projector preset with the camera to act as a backup in case the projector feed fails. To make your own preset, select the camera you want to use on the PTZ software. Again, these are labeled MMR1, MMR2, and MMR3. These are the gray tabs located on the top of the PTZ software. Once the camera is selected, constitute your shot however you like using the pan and tilt arrows and the magnifying glass for zooming in and zooming out. Once you're happy with how your shot looks, left click on the set radial button located above the tiles on the lower portion of the PTZ optics window. Next, left click on the tile you would like the preset to be assigned to. You'll be able to label this preset whatever you'd like. So make sure to pick something that makes sense. You can have up to nine presets for each camera. However, you don't have to use that many. It's completely fine to have only one or two presets for each camera. Once you're done creating these presets, select the recall radial button on the top portion of the software above the preset tiles. Left click on the tile you'd like to use and it will recall that preset. Congratulations, you just made your first camera presets. I'm so proud of you, I'm so super proud. Sometimes when recording a meeting, an issue will present itself. Don't panic, this happens to everyone. In this section of the video, we'll go over how to fix some issues that may arise while recording a government meeting. Issue one. Sometimes the projector feed may not be viewable in vMix. You'll be able to tell this is happening because the tile labeled MMR projector will be completely black. The fix for this is Quick and easy, fortunately. Open Google Chrome. If you haven't used it before, this is what the desktop icon looks like. Once Google Chrome is opened, on the top of the screen, you'll see a bookmark titled MMR Projector. Left click on this. You'll be brought to a sign in page for the projector device. To log in, left click where it says username. Then left click on the saved login information for admin once it pops up. This will autofill the username and password fields for you. Left click on sign in. Once you're logged in, left click on the admin tab located on the top right hand portion of the website window. Left click on reboot. This should reestablish the connection to the projector feed. Put the projector feed in the standby window and then click fade to broadcast it. Issue two. The live stream graphic is not looping. If you find the please stand by for live meeting graphic is not looping, then try left clicking on the playlist button located on the bottom portion of the vMix window. This should enable the playback of the graphic and fix the issue. issue three. Another issue you may encounter is the stream dropping or the recording stopping. If you're unable to get them back up by left clicking on the stream button or the record button again, please contact SEM staff. When you're all done, close out of vMix and any other tabs you may have open. Press the Windows key and the L key simultaneously to lock the computer. Do not shut down the computer. Please leave it on. SCM regularly remotes into this computer for work purposes. So uh, please do not shut down this computer once you're done using it. Push the tray in with the keyboard and mouse back under the monitor and turn the dial to the left to lock it back into place. Congratulations on completing your first live stream of a government meeting in the main meeting room of Town Hall. 
Thank you so much for being a volunteer. Hopefully this answered any questions you may have had on the recording and live streaming process. If you're gonna volunteer to cover a meeting or an event at another location, check out the videos linked in the description for tutorials on how to operate other SCM equipment. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.